initially certainly is when the when the calculation is running uh, one of the stages is we have to set up what are called boundary value conditions and those um, portions of the calculation uh, can be uh, quite slow if we want to do them as accurately as we as, as we're able to uh, we have some shortcuts and, and whatnot but if we really want you know high accuracy uh, really good numerical results uh, we need to do this slower method and so what you're observing is a visualization of that portion of the calculation and uh, what you can see is that you know the calculation uh, for setting up these boundary value uh, problems for just getting through this one stage actually takes you know um, some time I think this is gonna end up taking about maybe 50 or 60 seconds uh, to complete and this is running uh, on a single core and a single CPU. This is all C code, um, uh, very, very sort of straightforward stuff. And we'll talk about the actual code and use this as an example in later things. So about uh, you know 50, 56, uh, 57 seconds for that thing to run. So um, on a on a single CPU. This is an eight core Mac Pro. Uh, it's one of the Nihilum systems, so it actually uh, has hyperthreading enabled. So we can get actually sixteen almost like virtual type processors. Uh, cores running so we can run this on 16 threads we can parallelize this calculation uh, relatively straightforward either using OpenMP or OpenCL either way we can we can um, parallelize it on the CPU and if we run that um, you can see it runs it takes advantage of multiple cores it runs it does its thing and we get a pretty good uh, performance boost uh, 4.7 uh, say 4.8 seconds on 16 CPUs so that's really really good um, it, it tells us at least that you know we've got a well-defined problem, a parallelizable problem, um, and that we can uh, get additional performance if we have the resources available. Now, what's really interesting though is that we can also do this on the GPU, and uh, what we want to know is you know can we get you know more performance and, and, and things like that, and obviously we can, um, but. The, uh, the, the, the important thing here before I show you this is that I want you to understand is that you know the results that we're going to get on the GPU are identical to the results that we're going to get or that we currently get on the CPU and I think that's probably one of the more important things is that uh, we're talking about uh, numerical accuracy so it, basically what I'm saying is that uh, there's no there's no trickery there's no um, mathematical shenanigans or anything going on we're getting the exact same results so let's run that um, on the GPU, and the GPU in this case is uh, the GTX 285 from NVIDIA, and uh, let's see that. And we can do it again, and again, and again, and I can do this all day. And so what you can see is we took a calculation that was running, took about 60 seconds on this system, down to about 180 milliseconds um, on a single GPU, on a single graphics card, which is phenomenal, I think, and I think it really sort of uh, goes to show you that uh, you can you can really really get a lot of you know floating point and numerical performance out of these cards and and the other thing to, to point out not only is there no mathematical trickery but the code that we're using over here on the CPU is pretty much uh, the exact same code that we're using on the GPU there's some slight modifications just to kind of uh, to get like a little bit extra performance out of it but by and large we're talking about exactly the same code code from C to an OpenCL kernel and like I said in later podcasts and whatnot we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those and you know how you go from one to the other and I'll give you you know plenty of examples and uh, show you how to you know uh, some techniques for optimizing these things and whatnot but anyway I just wanted to I wanted to kind of show you this demo because I think again it really sort of highlights the, the power of the technology and hopefully it'll kind of get you excited and thinking about some of the things that you can do in your own code in your own work uh, with with this technology so we'll switch back to the podcast uh, now and then we'll go um, and then we'll finish up.